Hello friends. In this video we're going to look at this ATX power supply with an eye out for what useful parts can be salvaged from it. ATX power supplies are commonly available in thrift stores and old computers. They're basically e-waste in most cases. Uh, they come in all different uh, power capabilities. This is one I don't even know that much about it, except that it is an ATX supply. It's got some of the characteristic features. 12 volt connector, SATA connector. This is a motherboard main connector of some kind that all motherboards have. Uh, more SATA connectors. So we can see a few things that are useful right away. So this one I'm going to take apart all of the useful parts on it. If you're a power supply person you can actually build a lot of different power supplies with the parts that are here but that's kind of a specialized job and maybe more trouble than it's worth for most cases because you can buy power supplies fairly inexpensively but there are a lot of good parts here that can be used on other things. As a first step we can just go ahead and clip off these tie wraps that frees up our very first prize the muffin fan 12 volt muffin fan useful for a variety of projects here's another one this holds two different things this little board that has a connector so we can just pull that off I believe or not okay not having any luck pulling that off so I'm gonna just clip it now this is the power input connector this is a general useful hobby project item we can take that off real easily and you'll notice that that fits into the box in its original place so that gives you the idea to save the box along with it possibly if you want to build something inside this that's got a bit of metal shielding around it I'm going to do just a lot of wholesale wire cutting which will clear things out of the way so by cutting all these wires they're all soldered to the board they're ultimately too much trouble to pull out of the board to somehow reuse but cutting them is is very quick and easy give you a little exercise in your grip looks like it's working out well to cut three or four of these at a time with these this is kind of heavy duty wire cutters So let's see what we've got here. We've got some general useful wires. Cut some more tie wraps around those. So I've got a box called wires, which is a you know useful thing to just pull a wire of some kind out of. I don't see any real use for these connectors so that'll probably just go in the trash I don't know of any place these are commonly used except for motherboards the SATA power connectors really have aren't aren't of any interest in themselves a little more wire there or wire here. This bundle is potentially useful. I don't know uh, if those connectors have had much use, but we'll save that for now. So that takes care of our wire cutting. Put those aside. So here's our pile of wire, our fan, and our power connector. We're left with the main board that can be dealt with separately. 
Now one thing to be aware of on these is they often have a high voltage capacitor like this one. Um, this has been off for so long that I'm not concerned about the high voltage capacitor but um, you would want to definitely be aware of that if the unit had been on recently. So as good practice I'm going to poke these with a voltmeter with one hand only which works out because I'm using one for the camera. These two leads on the bottom correspond to that big capacitor zero volts the smaller capacitors are rated at 10 volts so I know they don't hold any dangerous charge but if you look at this big one the markings are kind of inside there but it says 450 WV WV means working voltage so that's that's the rated voltage something like this when charged up might have you know 400 or 350 some, something like that that could really hurt you so we'll be aware of that now let's look at some of what else we've got here we'll go through the topology of this just a little bit these two with the green toroid appear to be isolation transformers power supply like this typically has a high voltage area and a low voltage area and this larger transformer is kind of the separation between the two so as a guess it looks like this is sort of the input side here and this is the output side we actually kind of know that because all the wires come out on this side I don't remember where the power wires went in but you know probably somewhere over here these are MOSFET transistors with their heat sink attached another set here on the output side so there's an input set and an output set and the transformer in between this high voltage capacitor is on the other side of a full wave bridge rectifier which is right here these typically have some sort of small heat sink on them as well as a kind of a dent in the corner so if you want to make a real simple power supply you've got some of the elements of it here you've got the bridge rectifier uh, isolation transformer which may not be necessary but is kind of a good thing in a lot of cases You've got your filter capacitor with a lot of capability. Um, there's other things on here that are kind of less reusable or more specialized for switching power supplies. There's going to be some sort of controller chip. There's opto isolators on here somewhere. Maybe these four, I'm not sure. Uh, those typically have a small pin count. There might be one for each voltage. Um, this and this are probably these are probably just chokes although we'd have to take that off to know for sure so kind of what I envision here is pulling off some of the big things that I know are of value leaving most of it alone and uh, you know ultimately this will go out as e-waste e whatever's left of it and the idea of what's a value is is obviously subjective based on what your plans and capabilities are so if you're trying to build another switching power supply these are of interest I've got some of those on the shelf um, this high voltage high capacitance capacitor is kind of of use the bridge rectifier is of use um, these transformers, I got some of these. They're they're pretty specialized. They run at high frequencies, which is what switching power supplies use. So, you know, they're I've already got enough in the junk box. I may just 
leave this one on here even though it kind of hurts me to throw cool stuff like that away got a lot of smaller capacitors and elements that aren't of much interest um, these are common and cheap to buy like these capacitors so no real reason to try to salvage those and one of the problems that this type of construction has is these are all board mounted parts with kind of short leads which makes them hard to reuse on another project we'll go for these isolation transformers and this bridge rectifier there's a fair amount of effort in desoldering elements like this even after you get a little bit practiced at it so it's kind of not something you want to do on every single part it's kind of something you want to be selective about in particular the more mass and the more pins that something has the harder it is to unsolder and I can't say that my technique on that is really perfected yet but uh, I've done enough of it that I'm kind of nominally good at it. Since my last shot I've done a lot of work on this board, pulled a lot of things off of it as you can see. I've grouped those in categories. We'll look at the things I took off in the earlier footage. Wires, muffin fan, and so on. And look at the categories that we've got here. These are inductors, also called chokes, of various sizes. Uh, they have this type that's kind of a stand-up, smaller size, medium, and even though, there's one in the middle, even though this has all these pins on it, there's only two that's connected, so I know that's a choke. These are the isolation transformers that I pointed out earlier. With a little careful inspection, you can see that this side and this side are separated and connected only by the magnetic toroid here. Got a small transformer. Don't know what the capabilities of this is. This might be usable in audio. I'm not sure. It's another small transformer. Uh, don't know what the capabilities of that are, but you can test those in the future. Got a few power resistors. Some of those are in heat shrink for some reason and others aren't. A couple little insulator pieces. These are the opto isolators. Those are of use mostly in other power supplies but may be useful in certain projects. These are three pin power either transistors or possibly um, regulators. I'd have to take the heat shrink off of those to find out exactly what they are. This is a control board that controls the overall power supply. This is so specialized that it's kind of only of use in another power supply. But it's pretty handy that it's got the IC and all the different uh, biasing resistors or whatever on here. So that's pretty good. This is the bridge rectifier. Definitely a keeper. Here's our big high voltage capacitor keeper also. Got a variety of smaller capacitors. I didn't think I'd take those off originally, but as it turns out in the value proposition idea, uh, two pin components like this are pretty easy to take off. So you know, a few seconds to take each one off, throw it in the junk box, you know, who knows. This is a, a set of MOSFET power transistors, probably, I don't know what this one is, it might also be MOSFET or a different kind. Uh, useful primarily in power supplies and maybe for some sort of power switching application, let's say under the control of, uh, of an Arduino board or something like that. We've got some specialized capacitors here. This is an AC capacitor that's used for line purposes uh, and it's relatively low capacitance for its size. That's distinct from these electrolytics that can only be used on DC and if they are 
connected to AC or connected backwards, they explode through this little relief valve on the top. There's even YouTubes out there, people deliberately exploding those. These, I believe, are varistors, which are kind of uh, surge control components. So, we've got a lot for the junk box here. I say junk box singular, but it's actually plural. You don't want to throw these all in one box. You want to separate them by category. And then fish around easy whenever you need something. Some of the things that I've left on here I may still take off later, especially the large components. Uh, this transformer is of interest, but it's pretty hard to get off of there. This transformer, as I said before, these are kind of specialized. Probably not worth the trouble. Another strip of MOSFETs and um, heat sink really it amounts to something with a large number of pins is kind of hard to get off especially if it's got a lot of thermal capacity notably these heat sinks and attached parts um, another strategy that I don't usually do but is viable is to disconnect the the MOSFETs and then you know do those separately which leaves you on the heat sink it's just got like one foot on each end that's kind of a mechanical piece that doesn't have an electrical function so that's not so hard to get off We've got a lot of little small resistors transistors things really not worth the trouble um, so those will probably just stay on there so imagine maybe at most I'll take this off and this off still but the rest of this goes in the trash probably so as you can see here we've got a lot of power supply based components but also some general use components capacitors and resistors are always useful in just about anything inductors in a lot of cases such as audio this might be used to put together for example a uh, uh, crossover network that type of thing depending on what the values are some little transformers isolation transformers that can be used for kind of a safety purpose on uh, some sort of relatively small power unit switching transistors so there's a lot of good stuff here to put away and reuse in future projects so that concludes our video thanks for watching and bye bye